three. It's contextualism, too. The two tones of green glass are meant to match the river and the sky. They pinch the windows to give that undulating wave look to it to match the waves. And then the bottom has columns. Those marble columns are octagons. It's subtle, but what that's designed to do is connect to the octagons at the corners of the merchandise market across the river. So you can see that connection, that context created there. They went to extreme lengths to connect to the merchandise mart. The same African marble used for the columns was chosen to match the same marble that's inside the lobby of the mart too. The lobby was re redone in the late 90s by Bernardo Trust Realty. The merchandise mart is an enormous behemoth of Art Deco. It's a huge building. It's known for its size. It takes up over two city blocks. 4.1 million square feet of space are inside this. The building had its own zip code until 2008, 60654. Built to be the largest commercial office building in the world, it was, and it was overtaken by the Pentagon in the 40s when the Pentagon was completed. The heads you see out front, that's called the Merchant Hall of Fame. The heads of merchant princes like Aaron Montgomery Ward, and Marshall Field, Wanamaker, Woolworth, what locals call the Prez dispensers out front. If you look to the right, this black box has projectors inside. What they do in the evening, they project artwork from the box onto this facade, almost two and a half acres of canvas to work with. It's called Art on the Mart. 15 minutes after sundown tonight, so check that out. Also, fireworks tonight as well, so check those out. I think 10:15 uh, tonight is when those fireworks go off out by Navy Pier, so that's a good spot to go to. Huge building. Big art project, check it out tonight. Again, 15 minutes after sundown, art on the mark. We noticed this red brick building before. It's one that stands out, and this is a better view of it, I think. That's why I talk about it a little later. This red brick building to the left, it's one of my favorites with that clock tower in the middle. It's called the Reed Murdoch Center. It was built in 1914. And this was a grocery store, essentially for Chicagoans back in the day, a warehouse building for produce and food. The architect behind the building was a student of the prairie style, a style we often associate with the architect Frank Lloyd Wright. If you know Wright's work, this looks nothing like Wright's architecture. It's a lot more subtle for prairie, but it is prairie because it's flat. You know, that's what prairie buildings do. They hug the flat landscape of the Midwest. As a connection to the prairie, you can see the ornaments between the windows meant to look like stylized versions of prairie. Wheat, prairie wheat between the windows. The building is also asymmetrical. This is kind of interesting. Locals will go by it for years, never actually see this or know about this. But in looking at it, you can see to the right of that clock tower, there are five inner bays of windows. But on the left, there are four. One, two, three, four. You can see that. So it's a bit lopsided. Well, why, why is it asymmetrical? It wasn't always. LaSalle, the street we just passed under, had to be expanded in the late 20s, right around 1928. So the building owners took out one bay of windows on the left and closed the building up all to make room for LaSalle that had to be built bigger. On the right coming up, we have a building that looks a bit like a Greek temple. That one there. Just past the bridge there, you can see what looks like triangles, Greek pediments cap the top. Those might be at the top of you know, traditional Greek temples as well. A style we might call neoclassical, postmodernist to kind of playfully reinterpret an older architectural style, an older thing. You can see small Greek columns embedded all over it. And tripartite design is also what makes up a Greek column, so the building is also tripartite. You can see the base shaft and capital attached.